Hello, and welcome to the Bible study lesson for the week of December 24th, 2023. I'm your host, Minister Marshall Bell. I greet you in the immaculate, exalted, and holy name of Jesus, who is the Christ. On Monday, the entire world will be celebrating our Lord and Savior's birth. Whether you are a Christian or not, Christmas is a day of giving to and receiving from others. I would like to wish everyone a happy, merry, and blessed Christmas. But in so many ways, it would seem that a great many people have forgotten that Jesus is the reason, is the sole reason for the season. They totally leave him out of the equation. Let us pray. Dear Master, as I come to your people right now, I'd like to praise your name. I'd like to lift you up because you're worthy to, who, to be praised. Bless each one that's going to be represented here under the sound of my weak voice. <coughs> Bless those in the part of the that don't know you, Lord. Let me say something on your behalf that will convince them that they need to be saved by you. Bless me right now, Lord. Hold me up behind your cross. How many say the words in the way that you want me to say them and not something I say not want to say for myself? How many say what you want me to say that will convince people to come to you, not to me? These and all other blessings I ask in our loving Son Jesus Christ's name. Amen. In this lesson, I will not be talking about the evening of Christ's birth, but instead, about two years later, when the Eastern astrologers of Magi whom we refer to as wise men, came to visit him. The title, the title of this lesson which I have chosen is A Star to Follow. A Star to Follow. We're going to be looking at Matthew 2, 1 through 12. Let's get right in this because it's a little long. Let me read it. Then after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod the king, Behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and have come to worship him. When Herod the king heard this, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. And when he had gathered all the chief priests and the scribes of the people together, he inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. So they said to him, In Bethlehem of Judea, For thus it is written by the prophets, But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judea, Are not the least amount among the rulers of Judea. For out of you shall come a ruler a, who will sh shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod, when he had secretly called the wise men, determined from them what time the star appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search carefully for the young child, and when you have found him, bring back word to me, and I may come and worship him also. When they heard the king, they departed, and behold, the star which they had seen in the east went before them, till it came and stood over where the young child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceedingly great joy. And when they had come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary, his mother, and fell down and worshipped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented gifts to him, gold, frankincense, and mirth. Then being divinely warned in a dream that they should not return to Herod, they departed from their own, own country another way. Now, according to the Gospel of Matthew, the wise men of Magi, visited Christ at the time after his birth. The Gospel of Luke 
records the conception of Jesus Christ and his birth. Eight days later, according to Masonic, 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 Masonic customs, Jesus was taken to the temple to be circumcised and given his name. Forty days after his birth, he was taken to the temple and dedicated to God in obedience to Leviticus 12, 4 through 5. And that reads as, She shall then continue in the blood of her purification 33 days. She shall not touch any hollow thing, nor come into the sanctuary until the day of her purification are fulfilled. But if she bears a female child, then she shall be unclean to two weeks, as in her customary impurity, and she shall continue in the blood of her purification sixty-six days. At some point, after this had taken place, the wise men of Magi came to visit Christ. According to Christianity's list of questions and answers about this, scholars estimate that Jesus was between 13 and 24 months old when the visitors came to visit him. This approximation is based on Herod's Vengeful, vengeful decree to kill all male children who were two years old and younger, which was the fulfillment of Matthew 2, 16 through 18. I will talk about that a little later in this lesson. But Herod's time frame is based on what the Magi told him about when they saw the star appear. Now looking at our scripture for our lesson beginning with Matthew 2, 1 and 2. That reads, let me read it again. That reads, now after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod, the king, behold, wise men from east came to Jerusalem, saying, where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and have come to worship him. As I have told you, the wise men were eastern astrologers, but not to be construed as of the same spirit as modern day astrologers who use numerology tarot cards, and horoscopes to try and predict the future of unbelievers of Christ. Some who say that they are Christians confide in these people also. But when anyone does that shows a lack of faith in the Lord. Because of the three gifts that were given to the Lord, people assume that there were only three wise men. But in actuality, there may have been many more. But there serves to emphasize Jesus' kingly identity. Affirm the Bethlehem origin of the Messiah and emphasize the gentle faith and worship in contrast to Jewish hostel hostil hostil hostility. <laughs> I'm getting my tongue out tired tonight. But even though Herod was the ruler of Israel, he had no idea of what these men were talking about. As ruler of God's people, he was supposed to know the word of God. But he was not a true king anointed by God. He was an appointed king by Rome and was not in the line of King David, but Joseph was actually a prince of Israel and may even should have been king. The star in the east, which these men spoke of, was a new celestial body that had never been seen before. 
for centuries. Astronomers have looked to the historical records in search of evidence for what could explain this star of Bethlehem. Scholars have been discussing potential causes since at least the 13th century. Perhaps it was a supernova, a comet, a solar flare, or even an alignment of planets. And some do believe that alternatively, maybe it never happened at all. The truth of the matter is science will likely never know the truth. Just as they cannot figure out what caused the bang in the Big Bang Theory to happen. But we as Christians know the truth by our faith in Christ because if the word of God says that it happened, it happened. As trained students of the stars, the wise men observed an unexplained phenomenon in the heavens, which was somehow interpreted by them as a sign of the birth of King of the Jews. The references in verse 1 to Herod the king, who was also called Herod the Great, would make their visit prior to 4 BC. That means before Christ came along, before the year, year 1, when he died. By using this timeline, our Lord and Savior was born in the year 6 BC because of his age. When he and his parents left for Egypt, I have referred to this earlier, and I will talk about it in a moment. But Herod died in 4th B.C. Now, the thing is, all the B.C. numbers are coming down backwards. You know, like from 100 down to 1. And now we're going from 1 up to 2023. Our Lord's age would have been 6 by the beginning of the year 1 AD because all of the numbers in BC count backwards just like I said Herod was succeeded by his son Antichrist which is spoken of in Matthew 1 22 which reads as but when he meaning Joseph heard that Antichrist was reigning over Judea instead of his father Herod he was afraid to go there, and being warned by God in a dream, he turned aside into the region of Galilee. But please allow me to return to our lesson scriptures, looking at Matthew 2, 3, and 4. That reads, When Herod the king heard this, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him, and when he had gathered all the chief priests and scribes of the people together, he inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. Let me look at my time right quick. We don't want to go over very much at all. Um, now here, Herod and the people of Jews ruling should not have been troubled by what the wise men had told him. To begin with, all of them should have known about the birth of the Lord themselves. People from a far off land should not have had to tell them anything about what they should have known. Our Lord came to his chosen people and most of them did not know who he was. All of them should have known the scriptures because the Lord had given them and had them written down just for them. He made very sure that his birth would not be a secret. The birth of Jesus fulfilled Micah 5 and 2 and 2 Samuel 5 and 2, which link our mighty king with David's family in Matthew 1 and 6. But Herod, after hearing this, gathered all the chief priests and the scribes together so that they could research what the scripture said about the birth of our Lord. They all should have been watching for his coming, just as each of us should be watching for his return. As sure as I am of his coming, 
I am just as sure of his return because each of us should have what Herod, the chief priest, and the scribes did not. Faith in the word of God. Hebrews 11 and 1 tells us, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Here, in this single verse, the author supports his encouragement to steadfast faith by reviewing the trumpeted experience of Hebrew heroes. First, he provides not a definition, but a description of how faith works. Faith is established convictions concerning things unseen and settled expectations of future reward. The Greek word translated substance literally means a standing under. Are standing under and was used in the technical sense of the title deed. The root idea is that of standing under the claim to the property to support its validity, thus, faith is the title deed of things hoped for. Throughout this chapter of Hebrew, the writer emphasizes that assured rest on God's promise. Instead of Herod seeing the Lord as a threat to his man-made man kingship, he should have been welcoming the Lord with open arms. He should have been very happy that God's holy, long-awaited scriptures were finally being fulfilled during his lifetime. This was a chance for him to see with his own eyes the goodness of God. Because in Matthew 2, 5 through 6, the word of God goes on to tell us. Uh, so they said to him, in Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written by the prophets. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judea are not the least among the rulers of Judea for out of you shall come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel understand what verse 5 says for thus it is written by the prophet who were primarily a foreteller who one who speaks forth and a divine message that can at times include foretelling future events among the Greeks the prophet was interpreter of the divine will and this idea is dominated in the biblical usage You know what I'm saying? Among Greeks, the prophet was the interpreter of the divine will, and this idea is dominated in the biblical usage. Prophets are therefore specially endowed with insight into the counsel of the Lord and serve as his spokesman. Prophecy is a gift of the Holy Spirit, which is spoken of in 1 Corinthians 12.12. 12 which the New Testament encourages believers to exercise, although at a level different from those with the prophet Sith's office, which is talked about in Ephesians 4 and 11. Knowing this, as the chief priests and the scribes should have, they should have told Herod that this is God's will that has to be done. None of this can be changed from what has already been written about the coming of the Lord, but this revelation of God's commitment to his people was looked upon as a threat to Herod, the chief priests and the scribes, 
because the hole that they had over the Jews like lives Jews lives were was about to come to an end some changes that they did not want were about to become reality you see verse 6 tells us that they all knew that our king of kings and lord of lords would be born in Bethlehem of Judea they knew that he would come as as the least of the rulers and all the while being the greatest of all rulers who would shepherd his people Israel moving on to Matthew 2 7 and 8 let me look at my time once again before we move on okay Matthew 2 7 and 8 says then Herod when he had secretly called the wise men, determined from them what time the star appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search carefully for the young child. And when you have found him, bring back word to me that I may come and worship him also. Herod did not want anyone to know so he spoke to the wise men in a pri in private to find out when the star had appeared. He told them that the child that they were searching for was in Bethlehem. Go and search carefully for the young child. And when you have found him, bring back word to me that I may come and worship him also. Hmm. Worshiping. Him also was not something that he was even considering. He wanted to kill this child who he thought would invade on his authority over the Jews. He was not about to give up what he thought that he had to anyone, especially not a little child. Matthew 2, 9 and 10 tells us, let me read that. When they heard the king, they departed. And behold, the star which they had seen in the east went before them till it came and stood over where the young child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceedingly great joy. If you notice, they did not need to do any searching for the Lord because they had help from above. The star that God had provided led them right to him. It led them just as the pillar of fire led the Israelites out of Egypt. If we want to find Jesus, he is always very easy to find. Because he will always be at the door of your hearts waiting for us to open it so that he can come in and sup with us. He will never force his way in. But he is always ready to be a part of our lives as long as we first accept him as our Lord and Savior. Do you not understand that whenever we find Jesus... We need to rejoice with exceedingly great joy. We need to worship and praise his holy name because he is worthy to be praised. What he did for all mankind makes him worthy for each of us to praise him. But we all need to look at him as if he did it all just for you and no one else. Because he wants to have a personal relationship with each of us. If you have to accept him when no one else will. Do that. Because each of us has to accept him for ourselves. One by one. We got to have a one on one relationship with him. Our final two verses. Matthew 2.11 and 12 which tell us 
Let me check my time one last time. Doing really good. Matthew 2, 11 and 12. They read is, And when they had come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary, his mother, and fell down and worshipped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented gifts to him, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Then being divinely warned in a dream that they should not return to Herod, they departed for their own country another way. Notice that verse 11 says, And when they came into the house, by these words, we know that they, are, they were not living in a stable or out in the open, but instead now living in a house in the town of Jesus' birth, Bethlehem. On the night of my master's birth, there was no room in the inn. He was wrapped up in rags and lying in an old animal feeding trough. But now I would say, as a song for the Jeffsons TV show says, they moved on up. But when these wise men, who were not Jews, men who were from a far off eastern land, when they saw the Lord, they all bowed down and worshiped him. They all praised this child. Because each of them knew they were looking into the eyes of their creator. They all had traveled a very long way just to see the almighty God in human form. But they did not come before God empty handed. Because they brought him gifts. Gifts were given to him just as we give and receive gifts today on the celebration of his birth. If anyone wonders what use a infant would have for these gifts, you are not alone. The primary significance of the gifts lay in their great value. They were indeed gifts fit for a king. Beyond making it clear that these were great treasures given in an act of worship. Scripture does not directly attach any other symbolic meaning to the gifts. However, without venturing too far into extra Bible speculations, it's reasonable to draw a few possible conclusions from the gifts brought by the wise men. These valuable gifts were clearly intended to honor Jesus, but they each carried a deeper theological significance as well. The gifts were gold, frankincense, and myrrh. The gold symbolizes Jesus as the king of kings. Frankincense symbolizes Christ as the high priest and his divinity. And myrrh symbolizes his death for the sake of truth and his humanity. These gifts Together symbolize giving our entire self to Jesus Christ, the gift of God. The gift of God. Uh, these gifts together symbolize giving our entire self to Jesus Christ. The gift of God equals offering the love in our hearts to Jesus. The gift of frankincense, offering the truth in our minds to Jesus. And the gift of myrrh, offering the service of our hands to Jesus. Hmm. In conclusion, when the wise men left, they did not return to Herod. As he had asked, they ended up taking another route home, which made Herod very angry. He thought for sure that he had a would-be king 
he could kill. But notice what he does do in Matthew 2, 16 through 18. This part I keep saying I was coming back to. Then Herod, when he said, saw that he was deceived by the wise men, was exceedingly angry. And he sent forth and put to death all the male children who were in Bethlehem and in all its districts from two years old and under according to the time which he had determined from the wise men. Then was fulfilled what was spoken by Jeremiah the prophet saying a voice was heard in Ramah lamentations weeping and great moaning. Rachel weeping for her children Refusing to be confronted because they are no more. Here Matthew reinterprets son the mean Jesus who comes out of Egypt with Joseph and Mary and settles in Nazareth. Herod's attempt to destroy Jesus is an analogous to Pharaoh's attempt to kill Moses in Exodus 1 15 through 10 2 through 2 10. The distress of the Hebrew mothers at the time of the Babylonian captivity, which is spoken of in Jeremiah 31 15, receives a deeper signification by the weeping mothers of Bethlehem. But even though my master created himself a body, born of a virgin, walked around on his creation for 33 years while he healed the sick, helped the lame to walk, gave sight to the blind, opened death ears, and raised the dead, his ultimate goal was to Redeem his creation, us, mankind, back from Satan. See, uh, my master went down to a kangaroo court. Never said a moment in word. They took my master out back and beat him. They whipped him. They spit on him. They kicked him. They pulled the hair out of his beard. They put a crown of thorns on him. That wasn't enough. They put a piece of wood on his back, something he created, and marched him up a hill called Delgado. Now, he was almost dead already from all the stuff they'd already done to him. But they, he carried that cross up that hill for me and you. And the reason I say for me and you, because the sins of the world was on his back. My sins, your sins, past, present, and future sins were on his back. All the sins that were here now, to come, whatever, the sins were on his back. He carried him up that hill. Once my master got to the top of the hill, he laid that cross down. Nobody forced him on it. He crawled over there and got on it himself, stretched his arms out wide, lowered his feet down low. They put nails in his hand, nails in his feet. When they messed up was when they raised him up because he said, I'm going to draw all men unto me. He drew me. Please allow him to draw you. My master hung there. And died. They took him down and they put him in a barred tomb. He laid there for three days. He didn't need it long because on the third day, they first getting up great Easter Sunday morning, my master walked out of that grave with all power in his mighty hands. Looked up to the sky and said, All power are in my hands in heaven and earth. So anything that you may need, he's got. He got it. He can take care of what you can't take care of. All you got to do is just give your life to him, trust in him. Now, if you've been listening to me and you would like to change your life, the door is always open to him. All he wants you to do is open your door so he can come in and suffer with you. If you are ready to give your life to my master and make him yours, pray with me right now. Dear master, I've been listening to that preacher. I've been hearing the words that he's been saying. It makes sense to me. I'm, I'm ready to give it up. 
And we going into the Christmas season, and I want to put you first instead of what I've been doing. Do you put someone in these people's lives that know you in the part of their sins? Someone that's not faking Christianity, but somebody that really knows you to help these people that you that may come to you know what they need to do next. Thank you, Lord, for choosing me. Thank you for holding me up behind your cross. Thank you for giving me a chance to speak on your behalf and being the one that you chose to speak on this subject. These and all the blessings I ask and I love you, Son Jesus Christ's name. Amen. I am Minister Marshall Bell, Great Peace Missionary Baptist Church. Well, my pastor is J.A. Molan. I am one of the ministers there. Um, we have four of the ministers, and the pastor makes six. Well, I, son, we have um, I, um, services uh, on YouTube, live and recorded. You can watch us at any time. Just like my Bible studies are. And I would say one more time. Have a Merry Christmas. And a happy and prosperous and blessed New Year. Said, to come. But until next week. We have one more lesson before the beginning of the year. Until next week. I will tell you. I, I, and let me tell you this first before I say that. I have no idea what God going to be talking about next week, but I'm going to be here ready, willing, and able to do what his will is. But until next week, I will tell you bye bye.